Hey, Snackers. Have you ever wondered how you could use APIs to integrate with collaboration platforms like WebEx? In Snack Minute episode number 40, DevNet's developer advocate, David Stout, will show you how to read and update CUCM configurations via the Axel Soap API. Hey everyone, I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Hey Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Welcome to episode 40 of DevNet Snack Minutes. DevNet Snack Minutes is your weekly 10 minute, all things DevNet, giving you a quick, fun way to learn about Cisco APIs, coding, and it's just some cool stuff that we do here in DevNet. And the fun thing that we're going to be talking about today are our collaboration platforms and uh, specifically integrating with our collaboration platforms with our guest, David. David, do you mind introducing yourself? Thanks, Matt. Sure. David Stout. Uh, I'm a Cisco DevNet developer advocate um, covering Cisco's collaboration technologies. I've been doing it for a while, I think uh, over 20 years now. Uh, so I've seen uh, and covered a lot uh, of Collab APIs um, and uh, eager to, to kind of talk about uh, some of the, the the more hidden and neglected, maybe older ones, uh, but still very, very important. That's funny that you said that you uh, have been with, working on this for 20 years. Um, as a point of note, Snackers, I've been working with David my entire time at Cisco, so I've had the privilege of of uh, learning from his uh, extensive knowledge in that space. So it's always I did been not a pleasure. This, yeah, if, I've been on cool. the same team with David the entire time. <laughs> David. Thank you for joining us. I wanted to ask you, Cisco DevNet has a lot of focus in recent years on WebEx and cloud technologies um, APIs. Can you tell us a little bit why should developers learn about these legacy UC APIs? Uh, sure. Uh, WebEx is definitely, uh, you know, the, the meeting product has been around forever, uh, but Web WebEx um, uh, communications uh, as far as messaging uh, and uh, WebEx uh, teams uh, is kind of the new exciting technology. Uh, there's lots going on, lots of new APIs and SDKs for developers uh, to explore, uh, and in turn for for me and, and DevNet to, to talk about uh, in events like Cisco Live and uh, with online webinar webinars and so forth. But uh, the the UC stuff, uh, the on-premise uh, communication stuff, uh, is uh, is still around. It's still uh, highly relevant. Um, something like 95% of the Fortune 500 uh, use those products. Uh, and there's millions and millions of uh, end user uh, customers uh, that interact with those products every day. Uh, and so if you are a, a, you know, a Cisco collaboration uh, developer, uh, I think it's uh, really uh, important to understand uh, the UC uh, on-premise APIs. Um, and uh, if you are a sysadmin who's uh, uh, exploring how to use network automation and Python and, and similar tools to make your day-to-day -day job easier, uh, and managing all those millions of phones and users and uh, UC clusters and so forth, uh, then these APIs uh, can really um, uh, pay you a dividend. Uh, we actually had uh, Grace Francisco on last week, and uh, you know we were talking about developer relations and developer emp empathy, and and you know a lot of the things that we talk about within DevNet is this DevOps focus for network admins on using. Git authored or Git ops uh, configuration management via Ansible or Terraform uh, to manage their network or infrastructure. Um, for collaboration platforms like UC that we're talking about, is this paradigm relevant for those decades old API and protocol frameworks that we're dealing with? Uh, I think so. Um, I think there's uh, not really been enough focus on it, to, to be honest. And I'm, I'd like to, I, I've been exploring myself, uh, I've been talking to some of the folks in the, in the collaboration BU. Uh, in the Cisco uh, CX uh, services uh, areas, uh, as well as individual developers uh, about that. Um, I recently created um, a uh, set of samples in an open source project uh, that you can get to on DevNet Code Exchange uh, that wraps up uh, the Axel SOAP API, uh, probably the, one of the most important uh, APIs uh, for managing CUCM uh, to use in, in Ansible playbooks. Uh, so you can uh, individually do add line, add phone, or add user uh, options uh, and uh, add your information is here, in here, uh, as well as use these uh, in um, more uh, uh, composing fashion, right? So you can uh, include uh, and add uh, multiple components. Uh, for example, if you have an, uh, to add a new user, 
uh, you can make sure that uh, they have a phone, the, a phone, the right phone is configured, they have the right line, et cetera, um, all based on uh, Ansible playbooks. Um, and uh, there is uh, an advanced uh, services, a Cisco CX uh, team that uh, uh, provides this uh, kind of uh, uh, playbook service. Um, but uh, myself, uh, expand this uh, set of samples, um, uh, get community members uh, interested in it, uh, and see how we can improve it. Uh, because I think uh, that uh, it's, it's very amenable uh, to sort of the Ansible and, and uh, uh, DevOps uh, flow. Uh, and that you have, uh, you know, configuration uh, changes that you want to apply to all of your uh, CUCM nodes and clusters. Uh, there may be security changes or uh, features that you want to enable or disable for, you know, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of users. Uh, I think this kind of automation uh, that you're already doing, hopefully, for your network devices um, and, you know, wireless devices uh, and things like that, uh, you can also extend. Uh, into your voice network and voice infrastructure to use the same automation tools uh, as well. Um, we certainly have a lot of uh, samples uh, covering how to use Axel uh, with just uh, your typical um, Python scripting. Uh, so if you are a Python guy, we have a lot of samples that uh, extensively cover uh, all kinds of use cases for UC automation in this code sample, and, and hopefully we can provide links uh, as part of this um, uh, video. So, you know, steal the stuff, uh, take it, copy it, extend it. We have lots of documentation on developer.cisco.com. You have myself uh, and other uh, developer support to engineers that can answer your questions and help you do this. Um, but, uh, you know, stop, stop clicking through this, this UCM admin UI. Uh, it's, it's, uh, can be tedious uh, if you have to do a dozen uh, user yeah. devices, uh, much less hundreds or thousands. Uh, so just like you want to automate away uh, all the pain of, uh, you know, network management devices, uh, explore some of these technologies to uh, take away the pain of managing your, your voice stuff as well. David, this is awesome because if I remember correctly, um, the Axel API is, is SOAP based, which, um, you know, we really don't talk about those things very often um, uh, within DevNet here because uh, it's, you know, for all intents and purposes, a legacy uh, technology uh, for API consumption, but it sounds like that you guys are building these samples to kind of abstract that pain uh, away. Uh, but on top of that, since it's so big, <laughs> um, you know, it, can you can it, can you help our snackers kind of understand how they can, um, you know, jump around and find the things they need relatively quickly? Sure. I mean, uh, the, there's a couple of tools that I use every day. Uh, one of them is is uh, this product, uh, Soap UI. Um, but you can basically look at the um, uh, Axel schema reference, uh, which, like you say, is is extremely large. Uh, but you can download uh, the WSDL uh, API definition uh, from CUCM and, and import that into Soap UI, uh, so that you have all of uh, the requests uh, pre-built. Uh, you can make a new request. It'll uh, check the schema uh, and create a sample uh, request for you with all the optional fields and required fields in there. So you can just add some authorization, your username and password for your admin, fill in the XML fields uh, uh, as you like, and then just click the send button to, to test it out. And SOAP UI has a lot of facilities for kind of stringing these requests together. Uh, so you've actually built some uh, fairly extensive automation using just this tool without writing any code. For me, it's a great way to uh, get the basic XML as a template, and then you can copy this, paste it into some uh, Python code or into the Ansible playbook and replace your variables uh, and you're all good to go. So as long as you can uh, import this into SOAP UI and find the request you're looking at, you don't have to de deal uh, with the actual WSDL definition itself uh, necessarily, unless you really want to get into the details and you can actually explore, uh, you know, Add users, delete users using SIP UI before you have to touch any of your code. So you, you know the XML is right. All you have to worry about is, is the transport at that point. So this looks a lot like, like Postman for RESTful APIs, uh, where you have a collection, bring it in, and you test it out. Yep. David, tell us a little bit about the future uh, look for uh, Cisco UC and its APIs. Sure. Uh, so the, the overall UC market, as I understand it, uh, you know, grew uh, hugely over the last year for, you know, for reasons uh, both of technology and, and the pandemic. 
Uh, Cisco UC, both in the cloud uh, and on-premise, uh, expanded greatly. Uh, so there's there's a big and growing market, including cloud, including on-premise. Uh, it continues to grow and become uh, more widely adopted, uh, even than it is. Um, the uh, and and they're growing together, right? So there's there's a, a ten. Uh, the vision right now is there's a cloud component uh, in WebEx. Uh, there's an on-prem component when it makes sense. Uh, if you really need uh, the extensive features, control, security, automation uh, that the on-premise stuff uh, provides, as well as uh, you know all the wide range of excellent uh, phones and hardware uh, that uh, are part of the the UC on-prem experience, uh, and merging those together so they're all managed the same. They all connect and interact with each other uh, seamlessly for the end user. And uh, you know, being able to work with APIs on, on both sides uh, as they converge uh, over time uh, will be extremely valuable. Uh, so, as far as I can tell, uh, the on-premise UC stuff and its APIs will continue to be important. Uh, I would guess uh, for at least five years, um, because that's when the support windows start to end for the the recent 14 release. Um, on into you know, I I would venture to say 10 years or more. These mm -hmm. products will still be used by millions of people and, and hundreds and thousands of, of uh, companies uh, that will need automation, that will need uh, you know moves, ads, and changes uh, that they don't have to click through every day uh, that want integrations. Um, and so, you know, learning a little about these APIs and some of the tools that make working with them easy, uh, I think, is is very valuable if you consider uh, UC collaboration a space that you're working in. Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, well, Snackers, uh, unfortunately, that's all the time we have with David today. But David, before we let you go, we ask all of our guests this very important question. Uh, what superpower would you have and why? Oh, that's a stumper. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe healing, the power to heal. Um, before okay. I, I joined Cisco um, and you know the previous job I had, I was actually in, in pre-med. I wanted to be a doctor. Uh, so okay. I think uh, I've always had a, um, an interest in a soft spot in, in you know, health and, and healing. Uh, and I think being able to bring that to people uh, would be awesome. I think that's the first time that we had that one. So very cool, David. Uh, well, yeah. thank you for, for joining us this week and uh, showing us and talking to us about all these cool UC APIs. And uh, Snackers, catch us next week for another episode of DevNet Stack Minute. Thanks, Snackers. Thanks, David.